J.J. McCarthy, obviously, I'm, I'm biased when it comes to him. And um, I, I just loved watching him play at Michigan. I'm going to miss the heck out of him because just the way that he commanded everything was awesome. Best one. I've, I, and when Harbaugh said he's the best quarterback Michigan's had. You're and I, agreeing. You're like. Well, I, I, I don't know how you could say no to that because Brady at the time was splitting reps with Drew Henson. Yeah. That had nothing, he had nothing to do with that. But, I mean, Jim is including himself in this category here. Yeah. I know. I think that's cool, too, when a guy I can mean, say yeah. somebody that was great at Michigan that – you know, fans revere and love him and everything. And Jim's yeah. like, no, I think this guy is better. Is better. That's pretty awesome of Jim. And look, it's it's easy to love a lot of stuff about JJ. I've been super fortunate. Like two and a half years ago, one of my coaches from the Ravens became the quarterback coach there. We got connected. I got to start training JJ from the get go. Mm -hmm. The kid has so many things going for him. You can just see the love of the game, the 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 work ethic, the talent, the drive. The he has so many pieces. I mean, it was very cool to see it play out on the biggest stage of Michigan to put together a year like that. And here's the thing, too. I sat in the stands for that TCU game. I, I was there for the playoff Me game. Me, too. He made some great plays. And I know there was a couple plays here or there that he's like, oh, I wish I could get that one back. To go through that heartbreak, but then to know we have a chance this next year to do it, and they run the table and do it. You know, that's pressure. That's going to feel like what the NFL feels like, you know, like, like there was an expectation that they felt there was as they were going through this thing, people are saying, could Michigan be the best team? And when you're the quarterback of a team like that, whether or not how many times you throw a football in a game, you still deal with what it feels like to be the pressure of a potential national championship team. Well, and again, the red flag for him. And um, as we brought up, you know, with Jaden Daniels and when we talk panics, I'll, I'll bring up a red flag that's specific to, to him as well. The red flag for J.J. McCarthy is exactly what you alluded to the sense that Michigan's dominant run with him at quarterback over a two-year period with the exception of losing to TCU in that Fiesta Bowl, it's, I wouldn't say in spite of him, it's not that um, negative, the red flag. It's as if it's not because of him. And the quarterback, that's what you need is to win games. What the championship games is, we're winning because of you. You're putting us on your back, and he's never been asked to do that. How do you respond to that? Well, I think it's okay for me to share this. Like, I sometimes obviously know things that I don't share, um, yes. but I, I think it's okay to share this. Like, JJ knows that. Teams ask that. Teams ask, why did they take the ball out of his hand? Or why did they take the air out of the ball to win football games? And I, his response, I thought, was great. And I'll, you know, I feel comfortable sharing that. He says, look, we knew to be a national championship football team. There was going to be a game somewhere where we were going to have to win in the fourth quarter, throwing the ball in the second half, putting together a two-minute drive, winning, throwing the football in the red zone. Because that's what teams say. You don't see a lot of drop-back passing in the red zone because they're going to be dominant handing the football off. You don't see a lot of fourth quarter, third down passing the football because they're usually playing with a lead. So how do we evaluate this? I love his response. He's like, we practiced that always. We were always practicing against our really good defense, one against ones. We practiced two-minute uh, drives. We practiced third-down dropback passing. We practiced red zone passing because somewhere along the way, if we wanted to be and achieve what we were set out to do, we were going to have to do it. So we practiced it. So he's like, I know my reps that everybody sees on game day, it doesn't show all of that, but I know all the work that we've put in as a team and that I've put in as a player in that aspect of my game in practice against a great defense. And... They did it against Alabama. They had to come back in the fourth quarter, throw in the football, win a game against Alabama. So, you know, in the game that he needed to do it, he did it. Um, but I know that in the evaluation, that's the thing that all teams, they all ask that. They ask that of him. They ask that of me. They ask that of, I'm sure, his coaches. Um, but look, it's a challenge, right? And uh, the thing I love most about J.J. McCarthy, he approaches the game of football the way you're supposed to play it. I tell teams this. I've been on some, some rough teams in the NFL. And you gather together as players and you say, look, to get out of this funk, we got to play this game like when we were kids. And we just let go of the outcome. We let go of these things. And we just play the game because we love it. I think JJ is the epitome of that. And the way that he plays this game is how you're supposed to play the game. You're supposed to keep that. Look, you, uh, Brett Favre, you say it all the time. Like, this, this is a kid's game that we get to pay and we, we get paid a king's ransom. Like, you got to have that inside of you that you're playing the game uh, for the right reason. And I think he does that always. Well... 
I'll, I'll follow up on that with what I've been saying here multiple times, and I'll say it again, and I'm going to see him Wednesday. I believe he's coming on our show Wednesday in studio in Detroit. Two things. One, the throws when he was asked to make them. Some of the throws got me off the couch because I've never seen a, a Michigan quarterback throw it like that. Windows, the types of windows that he would hit. Oh, my God. I mean, and, and, and in the horseshoe, Michigan was struggling in the first quarter. He made some big, deep throws that flipped the game. Yeah. Also, this year, in a touchdown that was highly disputed by Buckeye fans at the time and still to this day, the one to Roman Wilson, yeah. where Buckeye fans thought it should have been an interception on the goal line because the defender ripped the ball out of Roman Wilson's hands. That throw was courageous it was eye popping. It was exactly what you want. Second, you know, window type throw. Like you, you want these types of throws from your quarterback at the professional level. That's one thing. Two, in this day and age, John Beck, we're talking about transfer portals. We're talking about NIL, where if you're not getting the spotlight or platform that you think can showcase your game, you're out of there. If you're not maybe making as much money as you possibly can because you're not getting the platform or the spotlight that you're getting. You're going to complain. You're going to talk about it. Knowing this could be his last season at Michigan, hands it off 32 straight times against Penn State, isn't asked to put it on his arm. How many times did he publicly complain about it? I'll give you the answer. It's Mike Sandristil's number, zero, zero. That's what you want in a kid at the next level. And I have now said my piece. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I, and and, and I, I, so I'm, I'm clearly pounding the table, but I also understand when you see somebody like Drake May, who's bigger, and two Heisman Trophy winners also in this mix, that he's not going to be number one overall. I, I, I understand that, you know? And I think for his sake... I always want to see the quarterbacks go to the best place for them. Sure. You know, it's always exciting to go high. You know, you want to, man, it sounds cool, right? Go high as you can. JJ's going to benefit from more experience in doing those things at the NFL level. You know, the one thing I always say to guys is, look, be competitive. You have to be, I mean, quarterbacks should be the most competitive dude on the field. But don't compete on draft day of feeling like, you have to go higher than somebody else or your pick needs to prove to you how good you are. Like uh, last year's dang MVP was the last pick of the draft the year previous, you know, mm -hmm. uh, like Dak Prescott, mid-round pick. Like uh, he almost won the MVP last year. Lamar almost fell out of the first round, but look who went and got him. Yeah, like so it's like don't, don't worry about that stuff. And speaking of JJ, I want the team that picks him to be a place that's going to allow him to develop in the right way, the right areas. We already know the kid checks all the boxes of so many things. Right. And like you say, we want to be able to give a guy first round money and know that he's still going to be a team player. We want to know that that is where he's at. He's, you know, in leadership. True leadership is about what you do for the other people around you. It's not just focusing on yourself. The me, 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 I, 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 I want more money. I want this deal. I want the focus. I want the fame. No, no. True leadership is about what you do for the people around you, how you connect to them, how you serve them. I think that's what also makes JJ so great. Like, he knew Michigan football was Michigan football. That's all right. I'm the leader of the football team of Michigan football, and we're going to win however we have to. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.